think it was Matthew Shute that asked me a couple of days ago um, to go a little bit deeper into this idea of taking control of your experiences so that they're more positive than negative. Um, okay, it's not an easy thing to explain, but what I'm saying is we uh, we place value on things. You know, Shakespeare's right and wrong don't exist, but thinking makes it so, or something like this, good and evil, or whatever. Um, you know, two people can have the same sort of overt ex uh, experience. In other words, two people can, I don't know, um, eat something, and one person finds it revolting, the other person finds it delicious. Um, why is it that somebody watches one movie and finds it horribly depressing, and another person finds it cruelly hilarious or something like this? We can actually intervene to alter um, our experiences. It, and that, that much is obvious that, that, you know, different strokes for different folks is a fascinating thing, and it tells us that um, there are differing opinions on just about everything. Um, a good example of that is in this book, I always come back to it, William Styron's Darkness Visible, because it was one of the main books that influenced me in my life. Um, a male describing his experiences of depression uh, and how he conquered it, although he doesn't go into great detail. He just basically says, depression is conquerable, and I'm proof. His um, genius is more in describing lucidly what depression actually feels like <laughs> than saying, this is how to get out of it. Um, but um, at first he thought he was an alcohol withdrawal because he was a lifelong drinker, but uh, no, it wasn't that. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was in serious trouble. But here's his uh, little vignette. The book is full of vignettes. There were also dreadful, pouncing seizures of anxiety. One bright day, on a walk through the woods with my dog, I heard a flock of Canada geese honking high above the trees ablaze with foliage. Ordinarily, a sight and sound that would have exhilarated me the flight of birds caused me to stop, riveted with fear, and I stood stranded there, helpless, shivering, aware for the first time that I had been stricken by no mere pangs of withdrawal, but by a serious illness whose name and actuality I was able, finally, to acknowledge. Going home, I couldn't rid myself of the line from Baudelaire's dredged up from the distant past that for several days had been skittering around the, at the edge of my consciousness. This is one of my favorite lines, actually, in literature in general. I have felt the wind of the wing of madness. <laughs> madness sort of being, you know, the ancient idea of the harpies or the erinyes or whatever that uh, swoop down and drive you insane. Um, ordinarily, you're, th 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 this, by the way, this image is a peculiarly North American one. Um, anybody who's familiar with the North American countryside know, knows what it's like in the fall when you, especially in the northern part of the United States or all of Canada that's inhabited, you're out walking in the, in the woods or an open field in the countryside, and you're <laughs> up, and you look up and there's this massive uh, uh, flock, perhaps in a very intricate pattern, of geese heading down to, I don't know, Mexico or Florida or Venezuela or something like this. I don't know, wherever they winter, I don't really pay much attention to that. And it is a pretty impressive sight. You know, geese actually aren't all that impressive as animals, but when you see them flying together like that, it's pretty cool to see. And <clears throat> instead of actually being exhilarated by it, which most people are, it's kind of, a, as I say, it's a neat sight. He was horrified by it. Think about that. <laughs> um... Something in him has intervened to cast a negative, deeply negative, even horrific pall over uh, this um, event, which would normally be really a very pleasant one. We all know that that's possible. Um, we all know that, you know, I could watch a movie that I thought was, as I say, black humor, and other people would say that's just depressing garbage. Uh, and there are, you know, other examples of that. Um, one man's poison is another's ambrosia, etc. Fair enough. What that means is there is a certain degree of input, I guess, from us that um, flavors our experience, that flavors the quality of our experiences. Um, a lot of people would say it's just looking on the bright side. I would say, no, 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 it's far more complex than that. And you have to dig far deeper into the recesses of your mind to do that. Um, 
but it can be done. Um, the um, type of yoga that I follow is called Hatha Yoga, which you know, everybody's heard of, but it's interesting. The term Hatha uh, means, in ancient Sanskrit, to seize, to control, uh, to dominate. Um, in other words, you are seizing control of something. That's Hatha Yoga. Well, how about seizing control of your own experiences from something else that's controlling them? Rather than being um, a subject of your experiences or subjected to your experiences, how about you subject them, uh, subject them to you? How about you so train your mind that the Canada geese look good when you look up and not horrible? Because something has happened. It's just a flock of geese overhead. There's nothing inherently good or bad in any of that. But something had happened inside of himself that made that a horrible event. Um, how do we read that? You can read that negatively and say that, yeah, this disease is rotting away everything that you are and everything that you value. But it's got sort of a backwards kind of optimism in it. If you can, if it can happen negatively, what's to say it can't happen positively? That's essentially what I mean by controlling your experience, by having a valve between yourself and the outside world uh, that you control rather than it is completely out of control. Um, I'm not saying that we can all walk around in an ab abject state of bliss with the world, but you know, all the Eastern philosophies seem to say, and the Stoics seem to say, that you can, um, you can at least um, charge into battle with a great calm in your heart. Um, whereas most people f charge into battle with a powerful sense of either exhilaration or dread. Um, it does seem to be uh, the case that there is some room for inputs from us on our own experiences. That's what I was referring to.